Right, white rabbits one and all, it is the 1st of March. Mad March hares. Uh, and it's freezing cold and I wouldn't be surprised if it snowed. Um, so I'm much dressed up in order to keep warm. Uh, I've got to go cutting. I've got to check my seedlings. I've got a load of stuff to do. I've got some floristry to do. So I thought you might like to come along with me. But I'm also, while I do all my daily jobs, I am prepping... Uh, a new workshop which I'm holding this evening I do lots of l online workshops and demos um, as well as workshops and demos at the farm and tonight's session is about pricing flowers for sale and I know that this is a subject people really struggle with <clears throat> you know businesses like mine I really am apparently living the dream in that you know imagine I live on a plot where I grow flowers for sale and that's my job. How lucky am I? Yeah, well, how lucky am I? Let's put a value on that. <laughs> so I think, uh, so what I'm going to do is, um, if you want to come with me, we'll just have a look around the farm and do my daily chores. A bit of floristry, but while I go, I'm going to think about this workshop, uh, make the notes for the workshop, prep the workshop, so that I'm ready for five o'clock and uh, perhaps I'll have piqued your curiosity and you might like to come along too because growing flowers is the easy part. Selling them is hard and selling them for a price enough to make your living is not necessarily the easiest thing you've ever heard of. So come along and we'll have a nice time. And if you're new to the channel, please subscribe, press the bell icon and we'll tell you when we've got more clips coming up. If any of the tips and tricks I give you along the way are useful, you can always buy me a coffee or better still, join the club where we have all sorts of fun and games and uh, extra info and all that malarkey. Anyway, no pressure. Come along. Good news. We've had a tiny bit of rain. I wouldn't be surprised if it snowed, but... Important to catch the water, don't you think? Now, I'm really out to cut foliage to go with this week's orders. Um, I know a fair bit about <laughs> wholesale because during the winter, I order in from my colleagues, my season. It's always worth thinking about when you're a flower farmer. What's your season like? How long is your season? And my season... Of, I plan to have a garden full of cut flowers from the 1st of April, so a month today, to the 30th of September. And of course, sometimes I get more outside, you know, before the 1st of April, depending on the spring, and after the 30th of September. But that's my, that's when I work out, uh, that's my, my, for my cash flow forecast, I'm looking to be selling from the 1st of April to the 30th of September. <laughs> And it's really worth thinking about how many uh, stems you're going to sell uh, and at what price in order to make the kind of money that you need. And so therefore you need to start out by thinking what kind of money do you need? You've got to have a figure in your mind. Um, and I do have a lifestyle business workshop which really helps you work that one out. Or um, the career change flower farming workshop if you're particularly looking to be a flower farmer. Uh, really helps you identify those those numbers but once you've got an idea of what you're looking for to make you then have an idea of what you need the value that you need and therefore that will help help you decide what you're going to grow these are all annuals and um I don't grow an enormous number. I have small trays at a time. I have a very, very specific amount of flowers that I'm growing in a year. I This year, I've almost sold out for the whole season in advance. Because mine's a very tiny business. That doesn't mean it's not an effectual business. And it doesn't mean we make a, we don't make much money. We don't make a huge amount of money, but I know exactly how much money we need to make. And I make sure we make that money. Um, because I've thought about that. Um, I've thought very hard about the amount of money we need to make. 
and I have gone out there. <laughs> I decided what I'm charging for my product and I've gone out there selling it. And I sell a lot because we do masses of weddings. So I sell a great deal on Instagram because the Instagram follower, the demographic is a bit, is, is a sort of marrying age. Uh, so, um, so that's where a lot of my wedding work comes from and we've almost sold out for 2023 and we're selling nicely for 24 in advance which is great I mean I suddenly realized it's a possibility that I could sell out a season in advance and then I would know exactly what I'm doing it'd be really great um, but I can only do that if I've thought very very hard about the value of each flower that I'm growing and I'm making sure that I sell them for the amount I need to take in order to make enough living to keep six people living in a falling down Victorian farmhouse in southwest, southeast Somerset. Uh, so here are my little friends germinating away. Poppies. <laughs> Gypsophila. I'm going to stick my finger in because they're feeling it's worth lifting up your trays, giving them a heft to see if you think they really need watering. They look a little dry to me. But if I stick my finger in, they're nice and damp underneath. So in my mind, I'm thinking tomorrow I'll wash them. This one looks, it, the surface looks a bit dry. This is um, Ami Magus here. Uh, but again, stick my finger in and they're not too dry. So tomorrow I'll water. And I'm taking the lids off because they're just beginning to germinate. This weekend, it's Wednesday today, this weekend these will all be taken off the heat and put into the polytunnel, which you can see, where I have more benches where they can carry on growing away. Um, but I'm going to need the heat because I'm going to start propagating my dahlias. So the dahlias then all come in here. And even though there is forecast snow next week, <laughs> um, these beds are ever so slightly warm. The, the, the beds that my, can you see, you probably can't see, Woo, break everything there. I've got, uh, sorry about my hand. Um, they're on sand sandboxes which have heated cables Whoop. fun in here oh sorry about that so when i lift them up i can feel the warm underneath they're very basic it's not exactly a fancy pants propagating system uh, but they are a tiny bit warm and it just keeps the frost off but i put the lids on at night um because we we've, we've been having these kind of nasty little frosts and then during the day, I take the lids off and they they can have a breathe. And um, and have a nice time. So I've got all sorts of things in here, various different kinds of scabious, some echinacea, two kinds of ami, cobia scandon, snapdragons, um, uh, poppies, jip. You know, you know, the usual sorts of things that a flower farmer like me might grow. But uh, I'm thinking about the value and how I make make them pay and how I'm going to talk about it in my in my workshop. And what I do in workshops, I believe very strongly that you have to charge enough that you can tell everything at a workshop. But there's no point in having students on a workshop who feel in any way that you're keeping secrets from them because that's not really fair, is it? I'm charging them money and they're expecting to walk away more knowledgeable. So I charge enough so I can really tell them everything. So while I'm walking around, I'm having a think, what are these worth? What will they be worth? Why, is it, why am I growing them? Is it really worth growing annual gypsophila? Is it? How much is a stem worth? Who will I sell them to? And the awful truth is that the annual gyp 
I'm likely to mostly use myself. I'm not unlikely to sell much of it per stem wholesale. It'll go very nicely as in my my bridal work. So it's very pretty in, in brides bouquets and bridesmaids posies, tucked in hair, it's really nice. But it's quite fiddly to cut and a branching stem like this, if, you're, uh, if you cut them and you try and wrap them, they get bruised and bashed and crack. They're not brilliant to sell wholesale. So actually, if I were just selling wholesale, probably wouldn't grow the, the Gypsophila, annual Gypsophila Covent Garden. And that may be why it's hard to get. So on the other hand, I could think, well, I'll grow it because other people aren't growing it. And... Anyway, those are the sorts of things I'm thinking about. Eight minutes in my greenhouse, enough, come on. I'm in the tunnel now. And this is the shelving where those seedlings are going to be put this weekend. Uh, because all of these people are bigger and ready for planting in here. So some ranunculus and the sweet peas can be moved on. They're not being planted out yet quite, but I need to make room for, make room for those little people in my greenhouse so that they can come in here and then the dailies can go in there. And, and, and on we go. The reason I hold workshops at five o'clock in the afternoon it's, oh, sorry, I keep putting my hand in the way, but anyway, here we are. This is, you, you, you get what you get here. Um, the reason I hold workshops at three o uh, five o'clock in the afternoon, Greenwich Mean Time, or in the summer, uh, British summertime, is partly because, you know, my students from America or, or Australia or New Zealand, it's, a, it's the time of day when I can catch most people. Um, if they want to join live, although all of our workshops have, are recorded and are sent out, so if the timing is inconvenient, you can pick them up later. But it's also because then I get to do a day's work <laughs> before I do the workshop. And I find that really, really useful because I can think. I'm on my own, I work alone, and I like that. I like the, the sort of meditative time that I get before, in the run-up to the workshop, even if it's a workshop that I've held many times before, like last evening we did a dahlia growing workshop and it was really, really good. I mean, you know, I know of whereof I speak. <laughs> but but even so, to have the day to think about it is really, really worth it. And so I'm enjoying thinking about it and talking to you a little bit about the sorts of things that I'm going to be bringing up at this workshop and making sure that I I am up to date with and have considered all the points, not only that I plan to teach, but the questions that my students are likely to ask. All sorts of little friends in here. This is Vicaria Hispanica. <laughs> little row of Vicaria Hispanica, pink. And these beds behind me will be my first beds to flower at, in April. There we go, greening up nicely. Um, is it worth growing narcissi over here? I did a clip about how I look after these narcissi beds and the, the answer is ruthlessly. Um, is it worth growing narcissi? How much are they worth individually? What kind of narcissi should I grow? And if my season starts in April, is the narcissi season finished? Hmm, questions to consider if you're thinking of growing flowers for sale and thinking about pricing. It is true that until April, it is cheaper for me to buy Narcissi in flower, stems of flowering Narcissi from my Cornish colleagues than it is for me to grow them myself. And since I have a, my principle is that my flowers must be British grown, but not always grown by me. I don't have a kind of, I don't, so long as they're British grown, I'm quite happy to buy in if I need extra stock. So therefore I know that it is cheaper to buy those Narcissi from my Cornish colleagues than it is to grow them. However, come April, their season is pretty much finished. And so that's why I grow them. How much am I gonna charge for them? <gasps> well, <laughs> that's something I'll talk about in the workshop. Oh, look, peony buds. Oh, no. Why am I growing peonies after all these years? 
and how much are they worth? Here I am cutting Grisolinia. It's a great colour for this time of year. Look at that springy green. I just walked past the silvery Brachyglottis and the variegated Euonymus japonica and thought they looked rather grey and dark and miserable uh, and wintry. And I'm trying to go for a springy look with my cutting. So the Grisolinia is really, really great for the summer of year because it's got a yellow stem. Can you see that? And the yellow stem makes the whole thing look fresher. What are they worth a stem? Well, and I have got quite a lot of them, <laughs> but they're really, really useful. So I'm pleased that I have them for cutting, but if they're, they originally cost me about seven pounds 50 a plant. And I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, about 10 of them. And they've been in the ground for 10 years. And they're really cutting nicely now. That's quite an investment, isn't it? So what are they worth? Hmm, got to think about these things. How many am I going to sell at a time? How can I make it valuable to me and to my client? Oh, sun's coming out and suddenly it's lovely out here. But suddenly I'm dying for a pee and I'm gonna to have to go all the way back to the house, which is one of the reasons we're doing this project in the field is so that I won't have to walk so far when I'm caught short. When I cut, <clears throat> I like to cut in 50 stems at a time. I think it's very much worth considering when you're thinking about selling wholesale or retail or whatever it is, whatever your, your, your customer base, whoever your customer base is going to be, it's, it's worth considering at what scale you can do enough to make enough for you and it doesn't matter whether it's very very modest I'm it is I hate the way a lot of people are very judgy about the size of other people's businesses as if that somehow makes a bigger business a better sort of inherently better I'd say that's a load of complete rubbish each to their own and if you can make a living doing less then why <laughs> that's off to you uh, so that's a really big question that I think people should consider and I'm going to be talking about in my workshop tonight is, you know, choosing the level at which you consider you will have scaled enough to be able to make your living. And then you can choose how much you charge. The less you do of anything, the more you must charge in order to make it worth your while. That's a really obvious, <laughs> obvious thing. Um, so where are the numbers? Goodness, but the colour on the willow is still great, isn't it? I think, I think I will cut some for today. And then there's the question of detail. For example, here we have a wild cherry tree. I don't have enough to do wholesale quantities, but a little bit of this in my pre-sold arrangements will give them the wow factor that makes my floristry worth something, worth extra for my clients, because these will come out during the day, during the weekend in the warm environment where they're going. So will I charge what they're really worth? Will I charge, will I only give them to my special clients? Because the value of that customer is great through the year. How will I think about this? I ought to plant another 30 of these trees because, you know, look at this. <laughs> Wild cherry blossom in, in March and April. Ça vaut la peine, huh? And there's a bit more detail here with this lovely... I'll see if I can make it focus. Oh, yes. Physocarpus darts gold. And these old bushes, they hate it here. They're very unhappy. They're very lichen-y and they're not very good. And the, um, the stems will get frostbitten. And every year I say, I'm going to rip them out. <laughs> but then every year I cut all this early foliage as it comes out. I mean, it's only the 1st of March. And actually it's really useful detail. But how am I going to charge for this? I'm certainly not getting... 50 stems of this, I got 10 stems of that lovely 
wild cherry and I'll probably get about 10 of this. So this I will definitely use in bespoke retail floristry. I wouldn't sell this wholesale because I haven't got enough of it and it's not, it's, it's, it's not something that's easy to sell. The detail is nice for the clients who trust me. But if I said to somebody, I'll give you a bunch of 10 of these, they'd say, really? <laughs> no thanks. And I guess that's why I'll always be a little bit a retail florist and always do some bespoke work. Because I know what to do with those unhappy looking Physocarpus bushes. Um, and I need this for now, for this time of year. I need this. I need this, you know, for my mental health as well as my client's floristry. So, um, again, how much am I going to charge? Do I charge per stem or do I charge per arrangement? And those are the questions we're going to ask at this workshop. There's very little of that, but it's just the beginning of the season. <laughs> how much? How much? To make it worth my while. It's all very well my saying I really enjoy doing it. And I do. You know, look at that colour. It really makes my heart sing. But to sell those stems wholesale, I'd need a lot more. So I have to do retail floristry with them and and I have to really use them for clients who are used to my slightly eccentric um, arrangements and are used to a flat fee. Right, so that's 200 stems in the trolley. Time to go back to the studio and do some floristry. Until the project's finished now, I have to go the long way round. I'm going to be walking miles further this summer. I hadn't thought about that. When we said we were going to do this great thing in the middle of the field, it never occurred to me that actually I was adding miles to my daily walk huh, in the short term with a view to taking miles off my daily walk in the long term. Anyway, on we go. So having spent the morning outside thinking about my workshop, I'm now going to split it up. I've got plenty of things I need to talk about and I'm going to split the workshop into sections because uh, I've got two hours. I'll have 15 students. Not all of them will be live. Quite often, if people are in Australia or New Zealand or America, uh, I try and hold my workshops at a time that's good for everybody. But, you know, not everybody. Sometimes people are working, whatever. So they'll catch up later but I'll have about 15 students live on the session. And so I'm gonna split my two hours up, <laughs> my handy legal pad, so that I make sure that each section gets enough time. It's all very well having sort of lots of thoughts about this, you know, 50, 14 years of selling, growing flowers for sale I have, and 14 years of being a, flo a retail florist as well, gives me a sort of broad point of view which is, I hope, useful for my students. Uh, but I need to make sure that I cover everything because not all my students will be in the same position as me. They're not going to be running exactly the same businesses. They'll have their own ideas and they'll have their own questions. So I need to make sure I've got room for time for questions, uh, time for everyone to just introduce themselves and say what they're especially hoping to get out of the session. Um, and take my subject and split it up into 10, 15 minute chunks so that I can cover the whole process. And I like to turn my workshops almost into a story. So I start at the beginning and I finish at the end because it means it's easier for people to keep up um, and they remember where I am in the process. I have my trusty uh, flip chart. Never go anywhere without a good fat pen and a flip chart. That's what I say. Who needs technical genius when you can actually write things on a board? Right, I've now got to do quite a lot of floristry. So I'm going to, having made my rough notes, I'm gonna carry on, keep thinking, and uh, be ready to teach at five. So as well as the foliage and twiggery pokery I cut this morning, I've got Cornish Ranunculus, Sweet William, Narcissi, Tanacetum, or fever few if you're me. Lincolnshire tulips, lovely parrots from Smith and Munson. Pieris, 
more knocks. Uh, come on, farm, we call Narcissi Nox, and we called Ranunculus Ranunx. Lovely hyacinths and more tulips. And uh, I've got, as usual, I've got various events and bits and pieces that I've got to make up. So I'm going to get on with those while I think. This is where it's important that the afternoon doesn't get very bitty because I've got to pick my daughter up from school at four. So I've set my alarm for 3.30. It's 10 to 1. I've made my list for the workshop. It may get jiggled around a bit. I will type up notes so the students will get a recording of the session and some typed up notes just to help them digest what we've talked about and apply the process to their own situation. Um, but it's good that I've written this all down because I now feel confident that I've got, that I've thought what I'm going to talk about through. Uh, and part of what I do this afternoon while I'm doing the floristry is I'm going to make my arrangement where I'm teaching look pretty. <laughs> because if you're talking about selling wholesale, you want to have some material that you can talk about uh, as you go. I do like to multitask and I do like to make, you know, just because I'm doing one arrangement, I may as well do an arrangement, have it handy for teaching a workshop as a sort of show and tell thing. And uh, then I'll deliver it tomorrow morning. Go on and on. So what I'm making out of the, <clears throat> the material I showed you earlier and that I cut earlier are three mixed buckets for a party. I always do these and I think I haven't charged enough. <laughs> but, you know... They're very good customers. And through the year, this client spends thousands of pounds with us. So while I could charge more, if it was a one-off customer, actually, you know, I need to calm down. I've done okay with this lot. And next I'm making a lovely arrangement in a soupière for number one Bruton with a flower frog to hold everything up. And this is skilled. This is skilled floristry. Uh, so I, what I need to do is make sure that I'm paid for my time, not just for for each stem. And I think one of the things that um, certainly flower growers struggle with is when they're doing floristry as well, is remembering to charge for their time as well as for the material they're selling. And so that's a big thing to talk about during this workshop. And we're going to talk about how you value your time and work that out. Because, you know, there's got to be... You've got to be able to give yourself some kind of formula in order to be able to quote straightforwardly to your possible client. And here is the piece for number one, Bruton, which is a small boutique hotel in Bruton, fashionable Bruton, lovely place to stay. And they have an order every week from me. And with this piece, the pricing is not really about the quantity of flowers. It's about the arrangement. It's about the vessel, if we're going to be Instagramish about it. And... It's about the life that you can bring to something. So it's not really about stem count. And here I've also added, you know, those details I was talking about before. And you can see how they work here. In they literally light it up. And you can see how these little tiny um, wild cherry blossoms are going to come out. This arrangement is going to last a week. It's going to grow in the vase. It's going to really work quite hard for its living. So, you know, it's important when you consider this sort of thing, how much you charge. And and I do think sometimes florists and flower growers really struggle because for lots and lots of reasons. Anyway, that's why I'm going to do this workshop because I think if I can share how I come to my decisions with my students, then we will all do better, I hope. Phew, it's all in the timing.